Hi, my name is Bernie Hogan, and I'm a member of the Network Canvas development team. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about how to design and configure a sociogram interface for Network Canvas interviews. Sociograms are a really important part of social network analysis and, and collecting network analysis data. One of the things that they do is help the participant to understand the, all the different names that we collected in context as their own network. And uh, we already got a uh, sociogram prepared right here. Afterwards, we'll look into architect and we'll show how to create one of these yourself. Now, I've already prepared a little bit of data here, as we can see from the table of contents. And the data I've created is first members of the Simpsons household. We left out Maggie uh, and we start with Bart. So we have Homer, Marge, Lisa, and Bart. And then we've also uh, added some extra individuals. We could imagine, for those of you that are familiar with The Simpsons, that this would be as if we are interviewing Ned Flanders, the, uh, the neighbor, the lovable and awkward church-going neighbor of The Simpsons. And so he knows who's in The Simpsons household, and then also these other people in the neighborhood that he talks to, including Homer. Now imagine we have them all listed, and what we want to do is kind of get the sense of who knows each other and maybe some questions about them. So this sociogram here, just like the pen and paper one, we can see has some uh, concentric circles in the center and we can arrange people here. The prompt I've listed is, please arrange the people, um, those that you know best nearest to the center, place people who know each other nearby. So I'd say Ned, Ned knows Homer really well, doesn't know Lisa that well, kind of knows Marge, doesn't really know Bart that well. Um, maybe he knows Apu and maybe he knows Seymour Skinner, the, principal of the school. So we'll lay them like that. They're sort of arranged in some way. Now, if you'll notice when I pressed down, uh, the screen didn't change, but we actually shifted to a different prompt. This different prompt allows us to do a different style of interaction here. And we'll show how to configure that later. So connect any two people who you believe have spoken in the last week. So I suppose we would figure that all members of the Simpsons household have spoken in the last week. We'd say Homer's connected to Merge, Homer's connected to Bart, Homer's connected to Lisa, Lisa to Bart, Bart to Marge, and Marge to Lisa. So that's a complete little clique there of those four. We would also say perhaps uh, Homer has spoken to Apu and maybe Marge has been trouble or Bart's been trouble at school and Marge has had to speak to Seymour Skinner, the principal. And maybe Ned knows all of this and so he's mentioning this. This is how we can create those lines in Network Canvas. Now you may know also on Network Canvas, not only can we create lines or representing edges or connections between people, we can also add um, a binary uh, piece of data here. So we can click on them to uh, signal something. In this case, who would you consult if you needed advice about everyday matters? And for that, we can tap say, maybe Ned would ask Seymour for advice or maybe he'd ask Apu. Um, as we know, um, in The Simpsons that um, uh, because Ned Flanders is very church oriented, maybe we forgot, oh, Reverend Lovejoy. So we can put him in there and we'll say Rev Lovejoy. Now let's see what happens once we add the new node and go back to the sociogram. Reverend Lovejoy shows up down here as uh, an extra person that we need to lay out. We'll say, we'll say he's very important to Ned, so we'll put him right in the center. You'll notice on this screen, the edges haven't appeared yet, but now when I go to the second prompt, they're back. Now let's go down to the third prompt and look, the highlighting is back and we'll say yes. You can consult, consult Reverend Lovejoy if Ned needs some advice about uh, something in the future. In a Network Canvas interview, uh, we have different stages and each of those stages that has a sociogram-like interface needs a layout. The layout says where the nodes are gonna go, or rather it's gonna remember where the nodes are gonna go. So we use the same layout for all of these three prompts, but we can actually have a second layout or many other layouts in this interview. In the next screen, you'll see here, I've actually imported an image into Network Canvas. And this is an image background uh, in which we can lay the nodes on top of them. And this will allow us to have a, a second layout variable that's going to remember the x, y coordinates on this particular layout, just like it did on the previous one. Now you'll notice here, as I drag the nodes in, the edges between those nodes also appear. 
and we can lay a poo down there, maybe Seymour at work, Reverend Lovejoy at work, or something like this. And we can see that this particular uh, setup right here has a different layout than the one before it. And if we go back up here, the layout up here is remembered. We'll have to cycle through all the prompts one after another. And then this down here has another layout that is remembered as well. If you want to make use of these layouts outside of the sociogram, uh, the layouts themselves are included in the data that's exported with Network Canvas. So on the final screen here, if we export the data, and you can see here we export to a file. It's going to be Network Canvas Export. I'll just give it the default name for now, but you should probably give it a more descriptive name. Actually, yes, I'm going to replace that data because that was demo data. Now, if I double click on this zip file here, you'll see they have a uh, some, uh, uh, first it has the name of the case, which I called test example two, followed by um, a long key that's meant for internal system use. Now this final one down here, if we look at it, it has the network canvas ID, and, and it also has some data that we added in, and the XY coordinates. Our first layout uh, is called layout one right here, that's what I called it, and the second layout is called layout two, and it has X and Y coordinates. You can use those, for example, to examine whether if it's a above or below 0.5 on the X or Y would correspond to different um, quadrants in a sociogram. Let's have a look at Network Canvas Architect and see how we can configure this sort of sociogram uh, to collect different kinds of data, including the data we just saw. So this is the same protocol right here. I've just loaded it into uh, Network Canvas Architect already. First, we had our first name generator, which you may remember as an alter, um, as an alter quick add. And we had another quick add, but this one had a panel. But most importantly for us today are the sociogram layouts one and two. First is just a standard layout, and then it's a quadrant. If we look at the sociogram layout, what did we do? The first thing is I gave it a name, and then I said, what kind of nodes are going to be in this sociogram? Currently, um, while we can have multiple different kinds of nodes in a Network Canvas interview, we can only show one kind of node at a time on any given sociogram screen. So you'll have to select that as the first thing you do when creating a sociogram. You can filter among those nodes, so you don't have to show every person. Next, you can see the background. You can have a blank background and just let people arrange nodes as they please. But research has suggested that ordering with certain affordances like concentric circles does help people to kind of uh, arrange and order their thoughts and kind of get people in a tidy way. You can change the number of concentric circles to use and we have this option down here to skew the size of the circles so that the middle is proportionally larger. And now let's have a look at the prompts. You remember those three prompts that we had? First it was to arrange the people, then it was to connect any two people, and then finally, it was who to consult when you need advice about everyday matters. Now let's have a look at this first prompt down here. Remember that in order to do any sort of interaction with a sociogram, you'll need to create at least one prompt. So let's look at the first one. It asks for prompt text, and then it asks for a layout. Now this is where we can highlight those uh, layouts that I showed earlier. I've already named one, and I've called it layout one. And so every time we want to see the nodes as laid out on this stage, or maybe even a new stage, we can use that layout one variable, and those nodes will show up in that layout. Now we can sort the unplaced nodes. Normally you would want to lay those nodes um, in the order that they were generated, but you can actually sort them according to any variety of rules with the variables you have available. But I think what here, this is the most important or really important for us to pay attention to is the edge display and creation options. Since the sociogram screen is meant to help facilitate the creation of edges, we have a number of options to help you guide uh, the user through that process. Now, one thing to remember is that especially because Network Canvas is optimized for touchscreen, we have a limited series of interactions. Mainly it's about touching, tapping and dragging. For Network Canvas the sociogram screen, that tapping motion can really mean one of two things. We're either going to tap 
to enter a variable, or we're going to tap to create an edge. Now on this first screen, you'll notice we didn't do either of these things. If I can go back to that uh, Network Canvas interview, on the first screen, and here's a little Easter egg for you, you can see I'm gonna reset the layout. Just under this prompt in the corner, if you click that minus, you can see reset. So in the first prompt, we just had people laying them out and tap didn't do anything. If I click on these nodes here, nothing's really happening. But in the second prompt, tap means edge creation. You'll see Marge here is, uh, has that ring that's kind of pulsing to show that she's the active node. And then we can click on Homer to make a link between Marge and Homer. On the third screen, tapping means something different though. Who would you consult if you need advice? That's going to be a tap will enter a true value for that variable. So I can click on Marge and say that Ned will get advice from Marge. Now let's look back here. Enable edge creation. For our first prompt, we didn't have edge creation, so we did not do this. And then we didn't have any variable toggling. We didn't create any new variables by tapping. We just allowed people to lay them out on the screen. Now then if we go into the second prompt here where we created the edges, you can see here it has the same layout variable. So that's why when we went from prompt one to prompt two, they both, the nodes stayed in the same place. And now down here, create edges by tapping on a node. So we toggle that as yes, and create edges of a following type. If you haven't created any edges yet, then you'll need to create a certain type of edges. Network Canvas allows you to create multiple types of edges, and you, you can display or collect any given type of edge on a sociogram screen, but only one kind of edge collected on one sociogram screen at a time. So this time we're gonna create an edge called spoken. Presumably that would mean uh, something about spoken to in the last amount of time. And indeed we see that here, connect any two people that you believe have spoken in the last week. And now we're gonna display those edges as well, of course, kind of makes common sense there. And now you'll notice we don't have variable toggling. You cannot use this setting at the same time at create edges. Enabling this option will disable that one. So we've created edges on this screen and we're just gonna uh, save and continue, keep it where it is. Now finally in the third prompt, you'll see what we've done here, same layout variable. We are not creating edges, but we're displaying the edges. And we can now enable variable toggling by tapping a node. What variable? It's the get advice variable. So whenever that node is tapped, get advice in the data will show up as true. And now we can, let's revisit that again, as you'll see below on the third one, the edges are there and we can do the tapping. You can tap on or tap them off. As a methodological note, it's worth noting that these are for implied false variables. So anytime where it might be yes, no, or I'm not sure, it'll be too hard to determine that from this screen. This is a screen for those cases where it would be definitely a yes or a no. Why? Because you tap for yes, and then you imply that the ones that you haven't tapped on are no. Finally, we'll look at the sociogram quadrant screen. The only thing to really add from what I've said so far is that in this quadrant screen, you'll see that what we've done is we've imported an image and used the image in the background. This image is a quadrant for home, work, and other, but you can have any um, image in the background, one that you think might be useful for you. For example, let's say you're doing work in a small town or village, you might wanna put a map in the background and just drag people on top of the map to say, where do you see them most often? You won't get rich data that way about, it won't know what's in the picture, but you will be able to use the XY coordinates to reconstruct the layout and then maybe use those XY coordinates similarly to learn things about the nodes. Just as like here, if it's in the upper left quadrant, um, so it'll have the values of uh, 0.5 and above for both X and Y, uh, then uh, that will show up in the data as such. The image that we showed was uh, in our assets gallery. And finally, let's have a look at that assets gallery here. Um, we can manage our assets. And this time we only have one in there, which is that image, home, work, and other. Also, I'd like to have one last look at the code book here because now we've made some edges. 
Now that you can see, we have node types, we have person, and here are some of the Boolean variables for person, some here that I haven't even used, including this one, social roles, which we will use in another video where we look at the narrative interface. Finally, you'll see down below, we have spoken, which is an edge type. And you can see here where the edge type is used. It's in the first, the sociogram layout one, and in sociogram layout two. That concludes the tutorial on configuring and learning about sociograms for Network Canvas.